risk assessment is a very important aspect uh, in occupational safety and health management because we want to manage hazard. Yeah. Previously, in my past uh, lectures, I have highlighted uh, the hierarchy of control, whereby the most effective way to prevent um, certain accident from happening is to eliminate hazard. But, you know, if you cannot, uh, if it's not possible to eliminate hazard completely, then there will always be a risk. Yeah? So you need to manage that risk. So how to manage that risk? One of the ways is to do a risk assessment. If you are able to eliminate the hazard, you wouldn't have to do this risk assessment eh? because there is no risk coming from that particular hazard. But there would be other risks eh, that relates to other hazards. <clears throat> now, if you want to assess the risk of all the hazards eh, that you can find uh, within a workplace, it can be cumbersome, it can be difficult because you might need to do like hundreds of risk assessment. Uh, that would be uh, too much of a burden. So, um, risk assessment is done usually uh, for those hazards that have the potential to cause uh, significant consequences uh, like I, I, I already mentioned uh, in the previous quest uh, that you have to identify hazard that has the highest consequences uh, the hazards they can cause death you know um, severe damage big consequences yeah uh, that can cause a lot of um, you know, the, um, inconvenience or difficulties to the organization or the company uh, if you find hazard that is have uh, insignificant consequences like a minor cut then maybe you can uh, delay the risk assessment maybe later uh, because you need to focus you pay attention to the hazards that can cause you know mm, severe consequences and you have to manage that hazards uh, if you can eliminate. <clears throat> uh, another important purpose of risk assessment is to for organizations or for companies to manage their limited resources. A lot of company have limited resources such as manpower, you know, or money that they can spend uh, to manage hazards. So <clears throat> if they have a lot of money then they can use all that money to manage all the hazards that they, that they can find in their operation. But to the contrary, a lot of companies do not have enough money to, uh, to invest uh, in managing hazards at workplace. They have limited um, money eh, and also limited knowledge. So <coughs> risk assessment can give them some kind of indication of which hazards that they need to deal first eh? which hazard has the higher highest risk so that they can um, focus the limited money that they have towards the hazards with the highest risk and then later on you know because we don't want the company to spend money on low risk hazards and forget about the high risk hazards the risk the hazards that can have, can have the high probability or high likelihood to cause accidents eh? so that is something that is <coughs> misguided eh? so it's like you <coughs> are pouring investment pouring all of your money all of, of your savings into a project that does not have any return or any profit so that is um, <coughs> a similar example so you need to invest <coughs> the limited money that you have um, towards the hazard that have the highest risk so that it won't 
interfere or disrupt your operation and causes accidents and other difficulties eh, to the organization. And other um, general information about risk assessment you can find a lot eh, in uh, Google. Eh. You can just Google risk assessment and you can find a lot of information about the steps, the, <coughs> the, the purpose about all of these um, preventive measures and everything. Eh. But my focus here is for you to to be hands on on how to do it. Yeah, that's why you have to fill in this form. So uh, let me go through this form. The first part. There are three major part of risk assessment. The first part is hazard identification, and the second part would be risk assessment. And the third part would be risk control. And if you put all together the, these three components, you will find that it forms the uh, what is called uh, HI for hazard identification, risk assessment, RA, and risk control IC, high rack. Yeah. So that is what. A lot of Malaysians call it a uh, high rack, but if you refer to the international terms, a lot of them just use a risk assessment. Uh, only in Malaysia that we use high rack. So for our purpose, I don't use high rack, um, but I use risk assessment because that's what um, that's what's the term that is used internationally, eh, globally. But if you find your friends or your bosses call it high rack, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's just the name is different. So the first part is hazard identification that is very important. That's why you have to do the, the quest before this. We have to identify hazards yeah, and know the nature of the hazards because if you don't understand about the hazards, it will be difficult for you to, to do a risk assessment. The first part of the form, uh, you have to indicate vision. Uh, this is just for this exercise uh, because in the past cohort, you know, you learn from doing. So they would submit it first and then later on, they maybe realize that, you know, they made some mistake and then they, you know, the, uh, the same student uh, repeat submission. So I need to know, you know, which one of your submission is the latest one so from the response that i get i there are one or one student that have already submit four times and one student already submit uh, three times i don't know what is the purpose behind that but i assume it's because of the you know improvement or you want to correct some mistake but usually you you resubmit when you realize that you made a mistake or when I have given you feedback on the work that you already did. Eh? So when you fill in this form, make sure you put in the right submission because I will check only the latest submission. <clears throat> so the first thing is to identify the hazard. Now what is the hazard in question? Yeah. So this is something that you already did. For those who have reached um, level 2, uh, that means your hazard has already been accept accepted. Yeah, That both of us already clear what is the hazard. Yeah? If it's not accepted, that means you are not sure what is the hazard. Uh, you may just, you know, hantam uh, sajalah hantar and you don't know the nature or what it can do. Yeah, so it's very, very, very important for you to need to to understand the nature of the hazard, and you have to be very specific. Uh, in some of the response that I get, you know, there are some that have inputted wrong. Hazard, yeah. For example, this one. Uh, that one is this one is totally wrong. Uh, you cannot put just psychosocial hazard. 
Number one, because there is no psychosocial hazard that you know within the character that you have chosen. Okay, I don't know why you put in psychosocial hazard. And number two, it is too general. Okay, so you cannot just put a general thing inside the 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 this question. Uh, what is the hazard? Uh, this one is quite good in to say lifting. Uh, the lifting work. So that is clear. Uh, the operation in question is lifting heavy bags of fertilizer. Hopefully, when you identify the hazard, be very clear and be very specific. Yeah. Uh, Let me see if there are other um, example of uh, wrong input. Uh, this one is wrong. I hope you can see that. You put it as the machine lack of safety aspect such as the machine does not have cover that protect the user hand blah blah blah. Now that is wrong because I don't know what is the machine. <laughs> okay, you have to mention very specific what is the machine. You don't have to mention what it's lacking. Yeah, doesn't have cover or you don't use PPE. That is a little part of the risk assessment. But you have to identify the object. Specifically, if this object is a machine, that's good. But machine is still very general. What kind of machine? Right? If you have a very specific machine with its name and its model, and that will be very good. Uh, because it gives me the idea of what we are dealing with. Uh, so don't put just machine. Uh, it's wrong. Uh, this is also another wrong answer. Very general. What is the hazard? What is the object? So the answer is machine that are in the workplace that can affect the employee immediately. Again, the question is, what is the machine? Okay, I want to know what it is. That's why in the previous quest, I will ask you, what is the machine? Okay, because we have like hundreds, thousands of machines and all machines have a different purpose. They can do different things. They have, you know, maybe one or more hazards. Yeah. So the more clearer you put in into this part, the better. Okay. Uh, this one is good. Yeah, LPG, quite straight, clear LPG. Yeah, Mini concrete mixer, yes, I know that is a mixer for concrete and it's a mini in size. Uh, meat cutting machine, that's clear for me. Eh? <coughs> so this part, you don't have to put, which can harm immediately because it will put it into the later parts. Okay, because this is the first thing that you need to do, you have to be very clear. When you are wrong in this part yeah, about the hazard, and the rest will be all wrong. Yeah. If you get got it right in this part number two, which is for your previous quest, then the other the other the rest of the uh field will be all usually correct. Uh -huh. The second question would be who is the recipient of harm? Yeah. So who is used if it's a machine, who is the, the people who are uh, who would use the machine frequently? Yeah. The people who are exposed to the hazards of that particular object or particular situation. Right? 
So in this context, the staff would be the workers of that organization lah. Uh, if you are looking at the situation where some workers is lifting cement bags, and so the recipient of harm would be the staff lah, because that staff is carrying the 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 cement bags, eh? not other people who are watching. They are not the 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 ones who are exposed to the hazard. Eh? It's the people who carry it. Eh? Uh, the student, this is because in previous cohort, they are doing the risk assessment within the campus. Uh, that's why I put it student, because student use uh, uh, the workshops in Unimas. So they are also exposed to a certain kind of hazards. The others is the other people, maybe the cleaner, uh, maybe the bosses, the managers that come into that area of operation from time to time. Okay, but usually the focus of the risk assessment are those who are directly exposed to the hazard, which is the workers. Uh. So workers in this case is the staff, lah, the staff of the company who are in charge of that specific operation in question. So I hope a lot of you put in staff uh, as part of your, in some cases, uh, when you are doing risk assessment, you want to know what can happen to other people. For example, uh, people are installing um, roof uh, in colleges, in Bungaraya College, for example. They are installing roof. And uh, a lot of the times, a lot of students are uh, walking underneath that specific area where they install the roof. Okay, And we want to know what is the risk to the students whether they are exposed to you know high risk of getting impact from the work that and that is uh, is done by the contractors lah at that point of time so your context will be others eh, other student other people eh? now if you are driving eh, on a road uh, whereby there are a lot of construction for example in Kuala Lumpur there are a lot of constructions to build uh, you know train systems LRT and, and everything and you want to know what is the risk of you when you drive there when you are you know what is the risk of driving in that area uh, so who is the recipient of harm would be the others who are not looking at the likelihood or, of impact to the workers there, you're not looking at the impact of contractors, yeah? the other people that is, you know, contracted to the company who happens to be there, but you want to know the context of you as a driver. Yeah? So this different context will have different risk outcomes. Yeah? So that is the context. And another context would be uh, the how. Eh? Question number four asks you explain how that hazard can affect the recipient of your choice. Eh? So you already know your hazard and you already know who is the recipient who have the, you know, the, the, the people in question eh, that you want to fo focus. Now, you want to know how. How does this hazard that you have identified and how these people that you have, uh, you want to focus, either they are workers or other people, and how these two can meet hazard and the recipient. Yeah? So you have to explain. Okay, for example, if you are, if it's in the relation, in the context of the use of machine, yeah? dangerous machine so you have the machines and you have the operator of the machine so when you look at the machine it has a cutting component that can you know cut your fingers yeah amputate your fingers and you want you have to explain how the operator of the machine can get into contact with the cutting component of that machine 
because that is very important for you to look at the risk to to have you know to analyze the risk if you have a chemical for example a spray paint you have to understand how people use that spray paint yeah? because the dangerous chemical is within the can so somebody must you know activate the can to to release the dangerous chemical inside it yeah? when the chemical inside the can is released then that is where the risk yeah uh need to be analyzed what is the hazards coming out from the can and how it can affect the people who is using that spray paint yeah so in this context you have to understand how people work okay how people work with machine how people work with you know lifting things how people work with chemicals yeah how people work with um you know working at height how can they fall uh, so that is a very important component in risk assessment is your understanding in the nature of how people work and how they can get into contact with hazards yeah and the rest of the risk assessment component would be um, relevant uh, to this context now you already know about your hazard who is the the recipient of that hazard and how both of that component can meet now the next part would be to determine uh, the risk yeah the risk this is the risk assessment part okay the first question would be what is the likelihood of occurrences okay. <coughs> and here the term would be inherent risk yeah inherent risk is the risk uh the level of risk without any controlling any control measures yeah? what if for example if you are driving a car if you want to know the inherent risk of a car then you have to take out all the safety features of the car what is the risk of driving a car without brakes without signal lamp yeah? without a clear windshield without a working um without a working without a good um uh what is the the apa <laughs> dipanggil lupa dah without a good tires for example lah without good working tires yeah so that would be the inherent risk for example so i have given here uh the definition of inherent risk the level of the risk before any action have been taken to change the likelihood or severity of the risk yeah why is this important because identifying the inherent level of the risk enable the importance of the control measures in place to be identified yeah so if there is a fire hazard there is a hazard that can cause fire in your home when you do when you analyze inherent risk and you identify that the risk is very high you know then you know the importance of fire extinguisher to help you for you know, the 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 existence of fire extinguisher in your home yeah? because if you don't don't have that your 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 house will be burned to the ground okay so with that in mind you will look at the fire extinguisher and <clears throat> you know with more attention okay you will take care of the fire extinguisher you know because if you if i don't have this fire extinguisher in my home and if there is there is fire it will be it will cause great destruction a big destruction that can affect me a lot for example i want to go back to question number 4 and look at some of 
the responses that I get and see which part that can be considered as wrong. So this is question number four. Now the question would be explain how the you know both hazards and the recipient meet. Yeah. So one of the answers that it can be considered wrong will be rejected by me is by giving a very generic answer like this lah. <coughs> explain how and the answer is physical injuries. It doesn't explain how. Uh, it really doesn't explain how. That is the consequences. Yeah. Another bad answer would be like this. Okay, I ask the question, explain how. Yeah. For example, explain how you meet your future wife. So you, it will not be a two-word answer. <laughs> it will be a long answer. Okay, during this day, uh, in this time of year, when I was a student, and I went to eat at the cafe, and then I saw a girl eating in the table next to me, you know, that will be a long answer to explain how you meet your future wife. So, if you give a two-word answer in the question that asks you explain, then that would be wrong. Eh? This is another example of a wrong answer. I ask you to explain how. But you give me the consequences again. Bad posture would give bad effect to workers' body, especially backbone. It doesn't explain <laughs> what really happened. Okay, it doesn't explain what really happened. The hazard is something that is potentially can happen. The accident that potential is realized. For example, if you punch me in the face, I will get a lot of bruise on my face. That is how a punch meet my face. That is a hazard, but not not in this context, uh, because that is not uh, working. That is assault. So that is a hazard. Uh. Somebody can punch me in the face, I will get bruised. Uh. Explain how. So you know, one will fly his his hand, his his fist, and it must beat my face. To to you know, to have the consequences of. My face getting bruised. So you have to explain. You know, don't explain. Explain how my face will get bruised. But you don't explain how, you know, how your face get bruised. So that is an example. This is another answer that is considered as... Oh, to me it's wrong huh? explain how the thinner is flammable therefore it easily set the set on fire which will burn or harm the staff at the company it doesn't explain how yeah, you write there easily set the site on fire how how it's easily set the site on fire <laughs> yeah, so I, I cannot imagine how yeah? so when you explain I can imagine in my head how it happened yeah. when you give the answer to this part it's as if you are explaining a scenario yeah. like you are watching a movie this is also another example that is not so good answer Without connecting the safety lanyard properly to the manufacturer designated lanyard attachment, it could lead to the worker to fall. It doesn't explain how the worker fall. How can he fall? What does he do to put him in a situation where he can fall? It's not what they don't wear. Yeah? It's not what they don't do. It's what they do that could lead to the situation, uh, the hazard. So, if you are talking about people falling from heights, you need to tell me how. You have to explain the workers 
as part of their job needs to carry what uh, building structures on the third floor <coughs> which is like uh, 15 meters high for example so when they carry the building structures they would have to be at a certain area at the edges whereby they need to install the window for example and the edges is where that person can fall because that is the open edges that is where he can fall uh, it's not about the worker falling on the on the on the uh, floor that was already there is the area that you know have the highest um, part where the workers can fall okay this is another example which is not good The company uses a sewing machine to sew clothes. A dangerous situation that can occur when staff does not pay full attention while sewing clothes that will cause bleeding or wound on their hand. <laughs> so, what occur when that staff does not pay full attention? What does that person does to put into put him or her in in harm's way? Okay. A better answer would be, you know, when they are sewing the machine, they hit that that person would have to, you know, move the material into the part where the needle is is operating, and that is where part of the finger would go into the path of the moving needle, and that moving needle can puncture the finger. Ah, uh, that is, for example, a better answer. Yeah, to explain how. So I hope every one of you can, you know, go back to your answers and review whether you are doing it right or wrong. Eh? Because that is where usually students uh, get it wrong. Eh? Okay. So the next question would be five. What is the likelihood of occurrences? Assuming there is no control or defense at all, okay, you have to imagine that there is no control. Whatever the thing that is put there to protect people from getting hurt, that is the control measures. And if you see it, you have to imagine that it's not there. Okay, what would be the likelihood? So you have four choices: highly likely, likely, unlikely, highly unlikely, and there is. A guide, yeah. So, in answering this, you have to look at what you have given before. Okay, in question four. Now imagine that situation. You know how likely would it happen if you are using a machine that can cut? You know. <clears throat> so, what is the likelihood that somebody will put their hands? In the way of the cutter, huh? the the moving part that can they have the ability to cut. So what would be the likelihood? Uh, you have to understand how they do that work. If that machine is the machine that can cut uh, raw chicken uh, um, at the market, for example, uh, you have to look how they do it. How close is their hand to the? To the the part that can cut, so, and how often that they do it, and uh, you know you can look at the history of whether it happens before or not. So that's why in question six I ask you, you want to justify using which aspect is it the history of accident or the frequency of uh, contact? Eh? So the, this this one you have to use your imagination and by looking at the work closely how they do work in occupational safety health you cannot imagine you have to observe like a scientist yeah 
if you're looking at people at work you have to look at them and look at how they do the work and give you a better of idea and a more accurate risk analysis so do not <coughs> take this question like a lottery main tembak main tikam you tak boleh main tikam tikam saja you cannot just you know close your eyes and pick an answer because you need to justify it uh, a lot of times when people do risk assessment they don't justify this aspect and eh? they just put like a lottery eh? why oh, choose this why i don't know i just like it or i feel like putting it's highly likely i cannot eh? it must be a scientific exercise there must be a logic logical explanation why you choose that so don't Uh, don't treat this question like a lottery eh? or like you are doing a MCQ exam main tembak saja when you don't know and then question 6 ask you yeah, you want to use which aspect yeah? history or frequency yeah? and then question 7 will ask you to explain your choice in question 6 Okay, if you choose history, then you have to um, answer question seven because that is the basis of your justification using past accident history. So you have to put in uh, example that I've given there, you know, based on history. Okay, this is also you cannot imagine. Yeah, you have to base on literature. Find some literature in Google, for example, that state. Uh, the frequency or uh, the the history uh, the history of uh, the similar accident uh, if you are talking about a machine for example uh, meat cutting machine so look at in accident history globally how many have cut their fingers in the past five years for example yeah uh, is it high is it low is it none nobody has ever gotten into similar accident in the past five years so that will give you justification to select the most appropriate likelihood now if you are doing your literature review and you find that you know in the past years yes there is no similar accident you are looking at people cutting their fingers using meat cutting machine and in your literature you cannot find there's no none so it's a solid argument to say that it is unlikely for anyone who use a meat cutting machine to cut their finger even though there is no protection yeah now if you choose frequency and then you need to do to answer question 9 yeah so frequency means how many times they are exposed to that hazard so i give you an example For example, if you use the meat cutting machine like once a year, so the contact with that cutting part is very low, highly unlikely because you just use it one time a year only during raya I use this. Yeah. But if you use that machine almost daily, and every day you use it like you know five to six hours. Then the likelihood will be higher because every time your finger is very close to that cutting part, and that is how you use frequency as a basis of your argument. And then question ten, looking at what is the severity of harm should that happen. So what is the worst case scenario? And I've given you a guide. Yeah, for example. Worst case scenario, when you use meat cutting machine, you know your finger will be cut off. So you look at this finger cut off. Is it insignificant? Is it minor? Is it major? Is it disastrous? So if a finger is cut off by <coughs> in with with contact with the meat cutting machine, so that is loss of important limb. Finger is very important limb because you use it to work. So it's disastrous. So you choose 
disastrous. Again, this is not a a lottery. Eh? You cannot main tika tika agak agak. Eh? Because I will read it and I will think logically. Eh? <coughs> uh, so, question 11 will ask you why you choose that one. If you choose disastrous, then tell me why. You, you, your opinion. Why you choose that question? Yeah. So I choose disastrous because and there is a lot of example that have been given. Yeah? And then this is the simplest question because it depends on the the answers that you were given before this. <coughs> okay, you have chosen the likelihood on this left, and you have chosen the consequences on top of this, so you just match it, yeah, plot it. So if you choose highly unlikely, highly likely, for example, and the consequences will be disastrous, so the outcome it will yield extremely high. So you just click here, extremely high, yeah. So this risk matrix will give you an idea what is the risk level of that operation. Yeah? If you are talking about worker using meat cutting machine every day for 6 to 7 hours frequency and it is highly likely and then if something happen that you know accident happen uh, the, uh, the, the worker cut the finger off is disastrous and the risk level for that kind of work is considered as extremely high considering there is no protection yeah considering there is no protection so this is inherent risk yeah so if you're thinking about driving at a busy road if you imagine there is no protection at all uh, no road rules, no uh, monitoring, enforcement from the police officers. There is, you know, uh, road condition that is bad. The, the risk would be extremely high. Okay. If you're looking at inherent risk and you know which kind of work is considered as a very high risk work. Alright, so question 13 is just a reminder for you yeah, so that you know you can put in the next section. You can answer accordingly uh, in the next section. So section 3 determining determine residual risk is almost like is similar like the previous section determining inherent risk uh, except for a few different things lah. Huh? So, residual risk is the risk that is uh, currently exists after you have put in the protection. Yeah? A level of risk that currently exists taking into account the controls that are already in place. Uh, now, you look, now you don't have to imagine. You have to look at the work that you have chosen. And you have to find what are the protection that is already provided by the company. Or by the operator of that site. Yeah? So question 14 asks, is there any existing control measure put in place that could prevent the event you specified in question 4 from happening? That This is a preventive control measure. That is prevent. If you are using a meat cutting machine for example, you want to prevent your figure being cut. So what is the protection provided? Uh, to avoid someone, somebody cutting their finger off. So, you just determine whether there is yes or no. Now, it depends whether you can identify the protection, the control measure put in place. Uh, that is something that you need to read. Uh, find out. Or else you might not identify any. But there, it is there. But you just cannot identify it. Yeah? So, that would be a potential problem. Yeah? So, to the 
the solution to this is you have to interview eh, the people there if, if the workers or maybe the bosses or maybe you can do a certain reading and compare okay and ask okay this kind of work can lead to fingers being cut and you ask the people there what 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 is the protection is that is provided so that you don't cut off your finger so the the staff might give you some answer Uh, oh, okay. This machine is equipped with this and this. Yeah? So whenever I do this, it will stop. For example, uh, and there maybe the bosses will provide you with the answer. Okay, we, to prevent that from happening, we have done this and this and this. We make sure that the staff, you know, go into a skill training how to use the machine, blah 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 blah, yeah? so that they can work safely and to avoid their finger being cut off by the machine. Yeah. So if you ask them and they don't know that will be a problem. I don't know, I just work. And you ask the boss, I'm not sure I just buy it and ask them to use. Yeah? So it depends upon the assessor, you to determine. If you also don't know, the staff don't know, the boss don't know, you don't know, then the risk assessment will be a lost cause lah. It's it's not effective. Yeah, not useful. So if the staff don't know, the boss don't know, you have to know okay maybe you have to take picture and compare it with the best practices yeah with in other places yeah what is the advices from authorities to for this particular machine that can prevent fingers being cut off and you look at it oh yeah 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 this machine got it or oh no 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 this machine don't have it so you choose whether existing controls measure yes or no yeah. question 15 asks you okay what kind okay so for this purpose you need to know what is engineering control which is considered administrative control what is considered as ppe personal protective equipment yeah. <coughs> so There is a link there you can learn about it. Yeah? So you have to identify the category. Is it a engineering control? Is it admin control? Is it PPE? Yeah? Because this kind of um, categorization will help you to determine uh, in the later part uh, yeah? to determine the the effectiveness of protection uh, in the later part. Okay, question 16. Okay, you have to describe. Uh, If you say there is an engineering control, then you have to describe so that I can, you know, see whether you are giving the right answer, and they are in the within the right category. <coughs> okay, here a warning: don't write what should be provided. Yeah, a lot of students from from the last cohort always like to put in, they must, they must, they should. I don't want to that kind of answer. I want to the answer. What is already provided? Apa yang telah diberi, bukan apa yang sepatutnya diberi. Yeah. The better answer I can see that on the machine there is what. Yeah. And I will check with the pictures that you have given whether you know you are saying you are giving me the a true picture or not. Yeah. So don't try to bluff lah, because you know you have the pictures already uh, in link in, so that I can compare. If you see there is a gut, and then when I check with the picture there is no gut, then I will uh, say your answer is wrong. So considering the kind of protection that is given that is already there, uh, then you have to determine the likelihood. Okay, if in the inherent risk there is You imagine no protection, and then when you consider residual risk, and when you look at the machine, for example, and there is no protection, so your past answer and the answer for this question would be the same. Okay. <clears throat> If the past answer would be highly likely, and then when you look again at the operation and you see that there is some kind of protection, some kind of control measures, then Your your answer in question 17 would be would 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 have to change. Yeah, you must change it. So the protection will lower the likelihood. So 
if previously in residual residual risk inherent risk you put highly likely for the likelihood and for residual risk you see there is a protection being provided then your answer must be lower yeah must be reduced to maybe likely or unlikely <coughs> yeah? so, <coughs> so this is where you use your critical thinking yeah, to see whether the protection is effective or not okay the main issue here is to see whether the protection is effective or not if you think that it is effective then the likelihood will be reduced if you think that the protection or control measure is not effective yeah then the the likelihood will be similar or the changes will be not so different lah maybe just uh one level eh? if it's very effective it might go from highly likely to highly unlikely eh? skip two levels yeah Question number 18. Is there any existing control measures put in place that could reduce the severity of harm? Now, this is mitigative control measures. Yeah. Severity, in which say it, it must happen first. Preventive control measure, we try to avoid it from happening. Mitigative control measures, what if it happens? Yeah what if it happens for example if you are using meat cutting machine what if the your your finger is meat the 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 cutting component yeah is there any kind of um control that would would uh prevent maybe the 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 finger being cut off completely Okay, instead of being cut off completely, there is a control measures there that could prevent that from happening. But you know, it can only cause you to have a minor cut. Okay, so this is happen not preventive, mitigative. Yeah, if you fall, for example, if you are working on the second or the third floor, and then you actually fall. What is the control measure that is provided in that work area that can reduce the impact of falling? Yeah, can you see some kind of netting? Yeah, that that will catch the workers uh, when he or she falls. Okay, now question number eighteen. Uh, this is the mitigative control measures. Uh. To reduce the severity of harm, the the potential situation must happen. Uh, there is also an example there, right? So that is the difference between preventive control measure and mitigative control measures. Yeah, a good example would be when you drive a car. <coughs> okay, so to prevent a car from crashing, the preventive control measure would be having a brake. A uh, braking system. So to prevent your car from crashing with the car in front of you, you can just put in the brakes, uh, hit the brakes, and you won't crash with them. So that is preventive measure. Now, if you forget to hit the brakes, and then the car crash with the car in front of you. What would happen? Uh, you might get hurt, you know, where your head will, you know, hit the dashboard of your car, and you will be severely injured. So, to prevent that from happening, what is provided in the car? It will be the seat belts. Yeah. So, the braking action is the preventive control measures. The seat belt is mitigative control measure it mitigates it reduces the severity of the injury that will happen to you whenever your car crash with someone else car in front of you yeah so if you forgot to hit the brakes and your car crashes with another car 
but because you are wearing your silk belt your face did not hit the dashboard and because of that yeah you might have some kind of a confusion but there is no severe injury to your face or to the other part of your body because the silk belt function yeah, effectively so that is the mitigative control measures i hope that you understand and can differentiate between preventive and mitigative uh, i'll try to look at some of the um, sample answer that were given previously yeah. question 19 and question 20 is the same in the previous question whereby you need to indicate okay the existing control measure of mitigative nature that you can find yeah for example if you find a chemical that can cause fire now the question if if there happens to be a fire uh, because the failure of the preventive control measures so what would be there to 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 prevent the fire from spreading so one of the good example is the fire extinguisher a uh, fire extinguisher does not prevent fire from happening okay but it does prevent fire from spreading so but it is useful only when there is fire uh, so fire extinguisher is a mitigative control measures yeah uh, so that we can put out fire whenever it started so the rest you have to give me the the specific answer and i will also compare to the pictures and to find whether you are saying the truth i uh, don't create things that is not there yeah for example you are talking about fire and you have given me the pictures and you say that, okay there is a existing control measure mitigative control measure there is fire extinguisher and then when i check the pictures i cannot see one Yeah, for example so try to reflect the actual reality of that work site yeah so question number 1 is the same like the previous component previous part whereby you have to identify yeah the severity of harm provided uh that the control measures is there and at the end of it you will have find the outcome of the residual risk level eh? <coughs> if during the inherent risk you 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 imagine there is no protection and then during the analysis of residual risk there is also no protection then the risk level from the inherent risk to the residual risk will be the same yeah will be the same but if during the inherent risk uh, during the residual risk you will find that okay there is some kind of protection then the risk level for this residual part would would have to be lower than that yeah considering whether the protection that is given is effective remember the keyword here whether it is effective Okay, a lot of student previously give answers that is not related. Yeah, for example, <coughs> you are talking about a cutting machine, and then you say that that the a cutting machine that can cut your finger, but you say yes, yes, there is a mitigative control measure. And I when I ask what 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 is that, you give the answer safety boot. the i don't see a connection there because safety boot protect the feet you don't use the feet to put in materials into the cutting machine yeah so the thing that can maybe protect your hand is the glove not the safety boot yeah? unless you use your feet lah to fit the material into the cutting machine have you ever seen somebody using their feet to fit the chicken into the cutting machine never kan? tak pernah pun nampak pun semua guna tangan 
Yeah. And then you cannot just indicate they use glove. Okay. You have to look at what kind of glove. If they are using a really resistant, a cut resistant glove that, you know, that can protect the severity of, you know, the impact of the cut. Because it's like a, like you are you like like a people the warrior during ancient times they wear chain mail they wear uh, body armor from metal uh, that one can protect you from arrow that one is effective for arrows yeah, but if you say it is effective but from arrows but they are using just a fabric then it's not effective. Okay, if you say that glove, uh, fabric glove, a simple glove, a cotton glove, can protect the harm from being cut, then I'm saying you are wrong. Because the cutting machine can easily cut through the cotton. <laughs> Unless you are saying they are wearing like metal glove. Uh, that one is logic. It can protect, protect the, the finger from being cut. Yeah, part of the mitigative control measures. Okay, and the last question would be: If is there a need to reduce the residual residual risk? Yeah, there is a explanation there. Okay, residual risk must be at the lowest level. Okay. So, if you find that the residual risk is within the region of extremely high and high, you need to do something about it. Yeah? Uh, to put in additional control measures. Okay, I did not ask for that within this exercise. Huh? It is for later. But here is just a matter of thinking about the risk. Yeah? Yes, if the residual risk level is medium or above, eh, extremely high, high, medium, then you need to do something about it. But if you find that residual risk is already low, then you stop there. And you just let the operation continue as it is because it's already considered as safe. Eh? But if it's medium, high or extremely high, eh, you need to have additional control. To lower the risk, yeah? especially when it is at the level of extremely high and high, try to lower it to medium. If you can get to low, it is much better. Let's see some of the example of answer that was provided. Yeah? <coughs> see whether you have done it right or wrong. Usually, it's part on the residual risk. Okay, describe the existing control measure. Let's see. See here, this is a very generic answer. When they are working, they they do wear a safety equipment such as safety hat, glove, and safety jacket to protect themselves from any possible harm. <coughs> so it's not it's not answering the question. Eh? What which one is mitigative, and how do you consider it as mitigative? This one, I'm not sure. <laughs> what what is that? maybe <coughs> typo or whatever it is? I can see from academic matter support and mutual understanding. <laughs> I'm not sure what's that. Some of some of you given answer that yeah they can or should so that's wrong. They can use a lifting machinery to carry the cement back. It's what already given. It's what already there. And not what should be there. This is also more of a suggestion. 
Okay, I suggest install safeguard, use of safety stick. <coughs> Staff will demonstrate and provide training. How do you know they all give this? And this is more of a, your suggestion to reduce the risk. But the question is, describe existing that are put in place. Apa yang dah ada dekat situ? Yang sudah ada, apa yang sepatutnya ada? Kalau you jawab macam ni, if you answer like this, I will reject and do again. Okay, this is also wrong. Kept in special container. Because I'm asking about mitigative. If they are using the thinner and the thinner can cause fire. Now, the answer would be what can, what is there to put out the fire coming from the thinner? Yeah. If you say the answer, the thinner is kept safe in a special container, not exposed to stuff. This is preventive. Secondly, the workers not put the thinner and anywhere for their specific place. It's also preventive. Finally, they also wear safety glasses and a glove. If you are talking about thinner can cause fire, okay, wearing safety glass and glove will not protect them from fire. They will get burned nonetheless. So, for those who have given your answer, please review. Because I see that a lot of you give the answer that is not there, something that is not there, what you think that should be there. So, if you give the kind that kind of answer, you know, I will straightforward reject it eh? because you are not answering the question. So, not a lot who have given the answer here. Yeah, this is another answer. I can see the safety officer and supervisors are giving priority to the safety of the employees as making sure the employees wear gloves when handling the, with the chemicals. This is not mitigative. That is preventive. Mitigative what would be if they are exposed to the chemical, what is there to protect them from the injury from the chemical getting worse. The damage is already done. They are already exposed you know, to the chemical. Now, what can you do to reduce the effect? Okay. For example, if you are cooking at home, uh, you are preparing a hot tea. Okay. So, you don't want to get your hand burned by the body of the hot tea but the body of the kettle that is already hot so you use glove so whenever you handle the hot kettle so you your hand won't get burned so that is preventive yeah but during your handling of the hot kettle there is hot liquid inside hot water and suddenly you mishandle the kettle and then the hot water instead of going into the cup it goes, it, it splashes into your hand. So your hand now is in pain because yeah, hot water is now exposed to your skin. Now what do you do to reduce the pain? You would go to the sink and open the tap water and let the cold water to flow on the area and on the affected area. So that would reduce the severity of the hot water to the to your to, to the skin of your hands that is mitigative net measure okay if you don't do that then the 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 the, the heat of the hot water will you know seep through the skin and making more damage to the cells of your skin that is the mitigative yeah like the first aid uh like um, chemical shower, yeah, fire extinguisher, like the fire sprinkler, 
Uh, those are mitigative nature. Uh, the netting to prevent people from falling. Uh, the lanyard that is mitigative and also preventive lah. Uh, but lanyard is more preventive rather than mitigative. Yeah, because the question it must happen first, right? 